Dwell on high, the lofty city. He layeth it low, he layeth it low. Even to the ground, he bringeth it even to the dust. That's your verse right there, man, what you just sung. Perfect peace. Pretty cool, man. You got a little Jehovah in there, too, in case you want to go to the Kingdom Hall a little bit later. Get all freaked out, man. Galatians. All right, let's do this. Let's read verses uh, 9 and 10. We'll get into it. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in deep, uh, yeah, in deep season, that would be good. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have, therefore, opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Thank you again, Father, for the night. Please bless this time for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. And Father, you might have the exaltation and praise that he might have the exaltation and praise due to his holy name. Father, there's none greater, none better than the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending the very best you had to the cross of Calvary to pay our sin debt, rising him up again the third day. Thank you he has the keys of hell and death around his waist. And thank you for the eternal life we enjoy because of his victory over death, hell, and the grave. We ask your blessing now upon this time of study and, and preaching that, Father, again, you would empower me to speak the word and words of Almighty God through the power of the Spirit of God, not my own flesh. I do thank you for the folks gathered here tonight, and I do pray again, Father, that uh, you would receive the thanksgiving and praise due to your holy name. Please minister to us as only you can. In Christ's name I pray, amen. All right, verse number 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. <clears throat> I know it sounds like a broken record. It's not meant to be a broken record whatsoever. But you are in a day and age of the church, I do believe, the Laodicean church. Uh, it's not this mythological thing that people want to just blow by and say, yeah, well, you know, you could say that, but it really doesn't match. No, I believe Ephesus is the first one going all the way through to Laodicea. Laodicea will be the last church age before Jesus Christ comes in the clouds to get his bride up off this earth, the dead in Christ, and we which are alive and remain. I do believe that. I do believe there are going to be churches in the tribulation period, not the church, the body of Christ. We're gone. But again, what by Bible definition is a church? Does anybody remember? Congregation. Congregation. Don't go to Benadryllville on me tonight. We already had that this morning. We got to, we got to, we got to pick it up a little bit before we go have uh, all kinds of crazy Jewish, anti-Jewish food like shrimp and all that kind of stuff. So... <laughs> So what I'm saying to you is that you're in a time and a day and age, and specifically a church age, where people are tapping out, man. People are lukewarm, or I found them cold. Now, I understand there's pockets of people that are still, and I will use the term, on fire for the Lord. Be careful with that, obviously. But that are enthused about Jesus Christ, that have some zeal for their Savior. I do believe that. I don't believe we're the only ones. I don't believe there's only, the only ones down in Jacksonville or, or DeLand. I don't think that's the only ones or, or down in, in Lake. I don't think there's, you know, just two or three people serving Jesus Christ. But it seems like that sometimes. And it seems like you hear more about people falling out and getting weary of the Christian life than there are jumping in, getting saved, and say, sign me up for the next 50 years, man. But it didn't say they just get 
the admonition is not just to not get weary, but what do the, what's the verse actually say? Not to be weary in what? In well-doing. Then, yeah, and don't, be, don't be weary in well-doing. It should never get old for us to do things well for Jesus Christ. Now, I, I know you're going to look at that and say, well, well-doing, the way that it's set up and, and, and the way the, the word, uh, the phrase is, is written is that, well, it's well-doing, that's, that's good works. Okay, but how about just doing well for the Savior? What was the final thing the Apostle Paul said? I have fought a good fight. I, you know what? I have laid it all on the line. My spikes are hung up. My glove is put away. I'm never playing again. And you know what? I'm happy to say I'm not playing again. I'm going home to see my Savior. But I didn't leave anything on the field. It was all out there. I did not become weary in well-doing. That is a battle. Because when you see unrighteousness continue to invade our country, invade our society, and, and invade, quite bluntly, our assemblies... People dressing the way they want to, looking the way they want to, talking the way they want. Even Christianity is suffering from this thing. You know, the, the, the life of living a sanctified, holy life. And I'm not talking about you don't wear blue jeans or, you know, you grow your hair down your back and have 17 kids in a car- and, you know, drive a caravan, which we did, but we only had two kids. But I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You know, the, you know, I'm just poor. I got 15 kids and I wear a long jean skirt and, you know, you know, if you're looking at me and you're not laughing, you don't know what I'm talking about. Thank God you don't. But that was the standard for spirituality back in the day. In homeschool your kids and all that stuff. You get weary with that stuff if you're not doing it for Jesus Christ. You get tired of the rules and regimen. But I will say this, you never ought to grow weary of being holy and having a practical everyday holiness. But it's not based on the clothes you wear and the stuff you watch on TV. That may get filtered out over time. But the reality is... We should always be looking to do well for our Savior because He lives inside us. I lose sight of that sometimes, and I know you do too, that wherever we go, we take Jesus Christ with us. That's a crazy thought, man. I know we know the verses. I know we talk about the verses. We read the verses. But to think that God sees what I see and God exhibits or sees what the, the language I exhibit at times of the anger, to think that God's right there, he must just go, what is going on, man? Well, did you get weary in well-doing? Did you forget who lives inside you? You can get weary in well-doing, but I, I don't want us to get weary in well-doing. So let's look at not getting weary first. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 3. 2 Thessalonians 3. Brother Bert gets 2 Thessalonians 3, 6 through 13. 6, 3 through 13 of chapter 3. <clears throat> now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which ye received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behaved not ourselves disorderly among you, neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves mm-hmm. an example unto you. To Amen. Us. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. <laughs> Don't be weary in well-doing. But what's it tied to in this particular instance? Go get a job and work. If you can, go get a job and work. If you can't get a job today or in the last year, you don't want to work. They're hiring $5 dummies for 20 bucks an hour. That's what my brother Frank calls him. I would never say something as rude and crude as that. But Frank has a way with the English language that not many poets have ever had. And yeah, you, <laughs> we know, man. It's called a $5 dummy. In other words, you need $5 dummies. You need people that know how to dig a ditch and tote some... That, that's nothing wrong with that. But now those $5 dummies are making 20 bucks an hour. And if you don't want 20 bucks an hour, there's something wrong with you, man. Part of well-doing in the context is... If you're a saved person, you're going you're gonna to think this is just as stupid as stupid can be, but he just, Brother Bird just read those eight verses. You ought to have a job and 
pay your bills and eat your own bread with quietness. That's part of well-doing. Isn't it weird how the Bible explains for... That had nothing to do with handing out a gospel track. That had nothing to do with being a public witness. It had to do with go to work, shut your mouth, pay your bills. That's a good tradition according to that whole chapter. <laughs> well, you ain't got that going on now, man. Everybody wants a handout. And that's not that the church doesn't take part in charitable things or help poor people out, because you always will have the, you'll have the poor with you in the millennial kingdom. But those are people that are poor, but I think punk people want to stay poor because they get handouts all the time and don't want to work with their hands. I got out of school in 1989. I didn't have my degree. I got drafted to play professional baseball, and I got back out of professional baseball, and I'm like, well, guess what? We're getting married in two months. I don't have time to go find myself. Go get a job. Because in two months, you're getting married. I went to work at a paper mill for eight bucks an hour, man. Four years of college, professional athlete, going to the paper mill. You know what I used to do at night? Pump gas right up the street on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. So I'd work five in the morning till five at night, and on Tuesdays and Fridays, I'd stay in West Springfield and pump gas from six to 11, and then come home. And then on Saturday morning, I'd work from five to 11 at the paper mill, and then go work from, uh, I'd come home, and then I'd go work three to 11 at the, at the gas station. Do the math on how many hours that was. I'm a professional athlete. Don't you know who I am? I've got four years of college under my belt. Don't you, don't you know how smart I am? No, get to work and pay your bills, stupid. You should be quiet right there. Like four years of college, professional athlete, and go and put 80 hours a week in with kids. You go do what you're supposed to do because it reflects your testimony of doing well for your Savior. And if you won't work a secular job, you're probably not going to work for your Savior. That's a weird passage to start off the night, isn't it? Well-doing, and he's talking about going and getting a job. Do you realize the apostles did not have to work? They could forbear working, 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. You, it's right in the context. We could, we could have stopped. We didn't have to. We didn't have to work one second. You're supposed to take care of us. We're apostles, a unique group. But you know what? As a good testimony and well-doing, we will work with our own hands. Didn't the Apostle Paul say over in, uh, oh, it's Acts 20, where he says, before, right before he says, it's more ble- you, or the words of the Lord Jesus is more blessed to give than receive. Right before that, he said what? These hands have done what? They've ministered to your wants and to my wants. I'm not afraid to work, man. This guy didn't have to work. He's an apostle, man. He could have gone to every church, preached the same three messages, got a love offering, and then gone to the church the next week. And did. Well, that's doing the work of an evangelist nowadays, unfortunately. <laughs> that's a weird verse to start off well doing with. All right, 1 Peter chapter number 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, please. It's a weird phrase, well-doing. Deb, 1 Peter chapter 2, if you could, 9 through 16. I know it's First Peter, man. I'm trying to dispensationalize it right now, too, man. Uh, I don't like obeying the law, especially the one out there that's got a square and black numbers on it. 
Jonathan, you best get, I'm, I'm asking for, I'm forcing you to say amen right there, man. <laughs> I mean, I mean, all kidding aside, man, in the COVID restrictions, all that stuff, there's just something in you that says, I'm not doing what you tell me to do. Yeah, man. You come down off the airplane a couple of years ago, and there's the people right down at the desk, and I'm like, I ain't checking in with you. <laughs> I'm serious, man. It's just something, well, you're rebellious by nature. That's your old man. But then when God puts a governor over you, and all kidding aside, our governor is not that horrible. He, he's not. He's not put any stupidity, really. I mean, but really, has it really affected us as Bible believers, really? But Peter is under the charge of the Neros, the Caesars, who are lighting our brethren on fire after being dipped in oil. And he says, you know what? Listen to the king. Listen to the king. He's killing us. Yeah, listen to the king. You know why? Because that's doing well for the Lord. That's well doing. I mean, there's something about this thing with well doing. I'm reading through and I'm like, wow, I'm really... Well, I, I handed out five tracks this week, Lord... There ain't nothing about tracks in that passage, man. There ain't nothing about giving to missionaries in that passage or the one before it. It's well-doing. You know what? When You, you get weary and well-doing because you, you get tired of obeying what God said to do. You get wore out. That's weariness. You just get, you know, the first four letters of weary are wear. You just wear out, you know, with well-doing. You just, you know what? You know, I, I just don't, I don't feel like doing well today. I just want to live for myself today. That's more common in your life, in my life, than you think it is. That attitude of, yeah, I know the Bible says that, but that's in our group too, man. I'm not talking about the fringe people, the NIV and the ESVs. That's in our, that's in our camp too, man, where we know the Bible so well, but we pick and choose which ones we want to obey. So we have a KJV Bible, but an NIV life. And that thing, man, doesn't, that, that's not well, you, you, you got wore out with well-doing. Why'd you, why'd you stop doing well? Well, I just it didn't feel like doing it anymore. That's weird, man. I do see Jesus Christ just going up the, the mount the, the, uh, to Golgotha and just saying, you know what, I've had enough. I'm going back. I've never done anything wrong. never sinned against my father. never sinned against you guys. You know what? You know, you guys go burn forever. I don't even care. Could he have done that? Could he have done that? Yes, he could have. But he wasn't weary in well-doing. He never got wore out with well-doing. Why would the Apostle Paul through the Holy Ghost have to say that to the churches in Galatia? Because saints get wore out with well-doing. I can't fault him for it. It's just... Would to God you wouldn't quit. Go on with me to second. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. First Peter 3. First Peter 3. Jen, can you get uh, 14 through 17, please? First Peter 3, 14 through 17. Just the fact you have to suffer for doing right and take it in the neck for serving your Savior, doesn't that just kind of make Amalek go, I'm not doing that. We, had, uh, we were out in front of the Excel Center many, many years ago, and I, I knew this sergeant a little bit. I didn't know him as well as I got to know him later, but his name is Sergeant Lawrence. He's retired since then. He came up to uh, uh, Harry Torres and myself. We were, we were out in the front. As, as we were wont to do, and we were preaching. And it was a UConn game, and it was, it was pretty heated. There were some people going by, and it was, it was just getting heated. I wasn't saying anything because I wouldn't do that, but I'm just saying that it was getting a little heated. There was some stuff going on, but somebody went up to Sergeant Lawrence and complained about our interaction, and Sergeant Lawrence basically said, hey, there's no, I've, I've observed this, there's nothing going on here, but he came up to Harry and I afterwards, and he says, would you mind moving from where we normally stand, about 50 feet that way on the other side. And my first thought was, 
I ain't moving. Forget that. Until you remember verses like this where he didn't tell you to stop preaching. He didn't tell you to stop handing out tracts. He didn't say, take your signs and get out of here. He said, could you just simply move about 50, 60 feet that way? And they can still hear me. And they can still see the signs. But my first reaction is, you're not going to tell me what to do. Oh, you don't want to suffer for well-doing. You're, are you getting wore out with the fact that you still get to preach my gospel, you still get to represent me, but you're getting weary because somebody told you to move 50, 60 feet away? He wasn't threatening me to put me in jail for, for preaching the gospel. He didn't say, stop opening your mouth. He didn't say any of that. He just said, could you move over there? And my first thought is, I ain't doing that, man. But then you think about what Jesus Christ went through standing in front of Pilate. And him knowing everything about Pilate's father and Pilate's grandfather and Pilate's great-great-grandfather and all the way back. And he says there, yeah, you wouldn't have any power if it wasn't given to thee from above. Oh, you say that I'm a king. And most of the time he just sat there silent while a Gentile, filthy, murdering jerk had his life in his hands. And he took it. That's The only, the only time I see in this Bible where guys go against the authorities is when it comes to preaching the gospel. I mean, Peter and those boys get beaten. I mean, they get beaten. And what did all those uh, high-ranking officials tell Peter and the boys not to do? Don't, you don't use that name. Don't ever use that name. Don't go back. Don't use that name. And Peter goes, well, we ought to obey. We ought to obey. That's the time you do it. But other than that, really, I have not faced any persecution for Jesus Christ in my life. Man, I've been out a lot. A lot of ministries, a lot of opportunities to preach. I really have not suffered for well-doing. So I had no reason to get weary in well-doing. Seriously. <laughs> I have no reason to get weary in well I really haven't done well <laughs> for my saved life. But I'm going to get weary. I I'm quitting. I I'm not going to church anymore. What? What happened, man? I'm not giving any more. I don't like them over there. Well, I don't like you. So let's get along together. Two negatives. You know, the only time that I told Dave Howard, the only time that two negatives make a positive are in math and when you and I are in the street together. <laughs> so if you don't like me and I don't like you, we get two negatives, we make a positive, we're good to go, man. So come to church. We can hate each other and open up the Bible. and It's a great time, man. But I really, I have no, I have no right to get weary in well-doing. Because of all the evil doing I've done against my Savior. As I like to say, saved 39 years, probably lived for Jesus Christ a month. If you put all the time together, that's a pretty sad testimony, isn't it? Where it was just him and me, me doing what he told, me doing what he told me, uh, me doing what he told me to do without complaining, without any looking for any reward or payback. Probably 30 days out of 39 years. So, you're going to get weary and well-doing, man. You haven't, really, you haven't really done well for very long there, son. You think you have, but you haven't. Mm. Is it time for the Super Bowl yet? Uh, cha chapter 4, man. Chapter 4. Chapter 4. Mm. This Bible is absolutely horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such a blessing to read it, man. There is no reason for you and I to arrive at that judgment seat unaware of what's required of us. 1 Peter chapter 4, Brother Jonathan, if you could, 16 through 19, please. Mm -hmm. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him with all diligence. <laughs> oh, man. You have to commit yourself unto your faithful creator. That's the only way you'll get through the suffering when you do well. And you won't get worn out. 
You know how you remember? Uh, you probably don't remember, and that's that's okay. Uh, what was the thing that Eli was supposed to do in the Old Testament? What was his one duty to do? What's that? The, the incense, what's that? He was supposed to keep the yeah, air, E-R-E, what a great old English word, air, the lamp of God went out. He was supposed to keep the lamp full of oil. But what happened to him? He got weary. I mean, all kidding aside, Eli is one of the greatest pictures of getting weary and well-doing. How does Eli die? Does anybody remember that? This is not in the notes, but this is all, this is all totally, you know, free. It's all, all, all free. What is it? On, on, falls back on his what? What's he doing sitting down? Weary and well-doing? Tired out? So tired out you can't do the one job he told you to do? He gave you one thing to do. Keep the oil in that lamp. Where you get weary? I'm not saying there's not a time to rest. You know there is. Uh, Mark 6, come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest for a while. They, had, you know, they were traveling so much and ministering so much, they didn't have time to eat. So the Lord does have a time for rest, but what happens is you get so used to that rest, thinking you deserve that rest, and the Lord's you know, like, pull over to the side, get underneath the juniper tree, let me feed you for a little while, but let's go back because Jezebel's still out there. And don't get weary in well-doing, because really none of us is really well done for the Savior like we think we have. There's not too many people I know of that have gotten wearied out for Jesus Christ. So, interesting stuff, man, about well-doing. All right, go to Genesis 19, man. You've heard the old statement, they're so heavenly-minded, they're no earthly good. I have never met anybody so heavenly-minded. They weren't earthly good. Have, have you ever met somebody that's saved that's so heavenly-minded? I mean, you might meet some good, good guys, good preachers, good teachers, good brethren, good sisters in Christ that are spiritually minded, but they're so spiritually heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. I haven't met one. In other words, point being is that none of us really have a case for saying, I'm just, you know what, I'm just wore out with doing well. I'm just wore out with this Christian life. You know what, I'm moving on to something else. I'm going to build my earthly castle, my earthly kingdom, or whatever, whatever it is. Save people do that. If you have a house, praise the Lord. Take care of it. You got to fix the roof. You got to do gutters. You got, you got to kick a spindle out at the bottom of the stairs, and your dogs are going wild at four o'clock, and you're trying to read. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'm upstairs reading as I want to do, and I hear, ah, 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 I mean, screaming, man. I, I thought it was the Exorcist. I didn't know what was going on, man. So. Riley lost her mind because she's a little older now and, and her hips bother. And, and I, I came downstairs. Of course, we have it gated so they can't come flying upstairs. Well, I didn't have time to gate it. So I kind of just gently put my big toe on it and I pushed it. And one of the spindles, it's a clean break though. Clean break. I, was, I didn't, actually didn't lose my mind. I'm like, what's going on, man? I mean, Karen's like, she got her limb cut off. Yeah. I mean, I'm expecting to come down and Riley's got her arm in her mouth just... <laughs> I'm like, she bit you. Get over it. That's the plan. That's how you're going out. <laughs> Riley and I have decided this. You're done, kid. <laughs> but anyway, I don't even know why I said that. that was pretty funny, man. That's my voice. <laughs> That's my voice. Of, of course, the girls are out on the deck chilling out and chilling in the hot tub. I'm like, um, you're okay. Yeah. <laughs> you got all your fingers, don't you? So I got invented band-aids and towels and stuff and Benadryl. Seriously, amen. Genesis 19. You can't make this stuff up, man. I do have a devil around me. And it's, no, it's not my wife. I do have a devil. He's been around me for about 36 years. It's my own little personal devil, man. It's not funny, man. It's all kinds of comes up with different stuff every, every day, man. Genesis 19. Who are we at, Taylor? All right, if you could, Taylor, 1 through 11. I want to show you some bad weariness. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing that, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and carry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. 
they said, Nay, but we will abide and see all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him and entered into his house. And he made them a feast and did bake a mother's mm -hmm. and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house around, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. And Lot went out at and Lot went out at the door unto them, and, <coughs> and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known a man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Wow. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. You don't think those two daughters remember that up in the mountain? Dad, you want to give us up to these bunch of filthy, stinking sodomites? I don't blame the. I don't. I'm not taking the guilt off of them, taking the wine and getting their father drunk. I'm not. I'm not saying that. But you don't think this resounds in the future? Those two daughters don't remember their old man doing that. Go ahead. Wow. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house. Look at this. Both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. They wearied themselves to find the door. This is not, they are, they are going to wear themselves out to get in being blind to go get what they want. Isn't it strange you can't get saved people to get weary and well doing? But sodomites who are blinded are scrabbling at that door to try and still, because they're blind and they're probably freaking out, but they know what they want. And they're going to wear themselves out going after their filth. They weary themselves. At the, they, 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 they're not going to stop till they get what they want. Save people. Pfft. Yeah, I'm saved. You want to do some well-doing for the Lord today? Whatever the Lord would have you do? Nah, I quit doing that a long time ago. No reward in it. Filthy, wicked sodomites don't stop. How is it they continue to push their agenda, not just the sodomites, but sinners in general, and say people just, eh, yeah, you know, take it or leave it. You'll pretty much always leave it when given with that choice, man. Go on with me to uh, Isaiah. Do I want to go to, yeah, go to Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, please. Haley, uh, Haley yep, yeah, Isaiah 43. So after you heard that dog story, you're like, I ain't going over there, man. It's thinking, it's thinking Cujo living over there, man. <laughs> Cujo. It's thinking sloppy St. Bernard. Not that I'm trying to call the... I think that was what the dog was, wasn't it? Mo, you still got it on your phone, don't you? Cool. Cujo, I think Cujo was a St. Bernard, wasn't it? It was a St. Bernard, wasn't it? Not I'm trying to dredge up old memories or nothing, man. I think it was St. Bernard. Like, St. Bernard's like rescue people in the Swiss Alps and stuff, man. The one on Looney Tunes has, like, liquor in his bay. He takes out, makes a martini, then he drinks it and goes down the mountain, man, after he finds Yosemite Sam frozen. You guys don't know that? What are you watching? Anyway, anyway. Yeah. Kenny, I know you're, you're not weary and well-doing, so. All right. 43, 22 to 24. Please, Haley. They get tired with the incense and the offerings, but then they turn around and wear out the God of glory with their sin. God gets tired looking at their disobedience and rebellion and says, you're just wearing me out with your sin. You know why? It started out with you getting worn out by doing the one or two things I told you to do, and it's bad weariness. Man, there's nothing like after you work a full day, man, you're tired out and you come home and you get a little bit of food and you go crib. And that sleep is just, poof. that's pretty cool, man. 
then you wake up and do it all over again. But when your mind's just racing around all the time, this, you know, you lose a lot of sleep because you're still looking at your phone, your phone bings and buzzes and zips and zings and everything. And people sleeping with their phone, I'm like, what's wrong with you anyway, man? I mean, I get it if there's an emergency and all that stuff, but I mean, I, I mean you're, you lose your sleep. You're, there's a good weariness and there's a bad weariness. I, I, I don't want the bad weariness, you know? You get worn out. Usually leads to boredom, then what do you go do? Well, let me go try something I never tried before. Ezekiel 24. Ezekiel 24. Please. Karen, Ezekiel 24. I know you can't turn with your fingers because you don't have any fingers left, but... <laughs> She's all like nubbed up, man, turning the pages, man. You see... Our house is the best, man. I'm serious, man. It's psychotic. It's great, man. All right. Anybody want a dog? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you, man, Kylie's evil. I can see it in her eyes. She's an evil dog, man. She's evil. She's evil. Anyway, <laughs> 6 through 14. Wherefore, thus saith the Lord God, go to the bloody city, and the hot and Is that awesome, man? Wow. Verse number 12, she hath, she hath wearied herself with lies. Have you ever told a lie? I mean, not you guys, I'll talk out in TV land. Have you ever told a lie and you had to tell another lie to keep that lie going? And then another lie on top of that one because you had to keep the story going? I mean, you guys have never done that. I'm just saying if you've ever done that, if you're just, you know, a loathsome, wicked, scummy person. But what I, I mean... <laughs> Who knew scum was in the King James Bible? That's phenomenal. I love Paul said, I mean, honestly, he's having a time over here, man. He's, he's like, I got a new life verse, man. <laughs> but the Bible says in verse number 12, she hath wearied herself with lies. You just keep lying. You lie to yourself. All oh, things are going good between me and the Lord. Maybe they are. Maybe they are, seriously. But a further examination might be, you know what? There's some things in my life that the Lord's put his finger on that could use some improving could use some bolstering. Don't lie to yourself. Isn't, isn't that part of what we saw earlier? Don't deceive yourself in Galatians. Well, you got, and I, I understand where I'm at. I understand it's Old Testament. I, I, I get it. But if they could weary themselves with lies and just wear yourself out with just not telling the truth because you've got to keep propagating the story down the line. Wow, you, you and I are subject to the same thing, man. And we know, who's the father of lies? God's not the one lying, man. It's your old man, your old nature, your old father driving that thing. And you got to keep the story going, man. You get worn out with lies. You say, well, that's, that's stupid. No, it's all part of, you, you're looking at be not weary and well-doing, and here's some bad weariness to not get involved with, which will affect the well-doing weariness. Justin, go over with me to um, Daniel 7. I think we looked at this uh, on Wednesday night about the, when James asked about saints. He needs to keep quiet, by the way. You don't ask me no questions, man. You just sit there and be happy. You're happy you're in the, in the, in the fold. No, that was, that was good, man. 
That just took off. I heard, I heard somebody over here was like, no, don't ask any questions like that. You're throwing the signals. You were, weren't you? You're like, yeah. Don't, don't do this. James, stop. <laughs> but we were here on Wednesday. So uh, Daniel 7, look what the old Antichrist is going to do. 23, 24, 25 to the tribulation saints. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all <coughs> kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, mm -hmm. and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and it shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and there shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Thank you. I know that's tribulation saints, but if they can get worn out there, and I, I understand they're facing just what would look like insurmountable stuff and pressure, a time that the, will be on the earth that's never been before. Jesus Christ said that about that period. Brother Bert mentioned it this morning. Uh, it would be real easy to get worn out. Why is it important for these folks to endure to the end and not get worn out? Now, I understand it's a different inheritance, it's a different situation, it's a different gospel and all that tribulation period, but the practicality of it is don't get worn out, man, by what's going on. The world is the world, folks. Satan is going to be Satan. And I know we say this so tritely, but guess what? He loses. He lost. He has nothing over you you don't give to him. You resist the devil, he'll flee from you. But you've got to submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. Part of that well-doing. It'll keep you from getting worn out. I know they're tribulation saints. I get it, what's going on there. But it's a great practical thing for you and I to, you know what? Don't, don't quit, man. Don't get worn out or claim to be worn out and just fall out, man. I think that's going to be a horrible, horrible thing at the judgment seat of Christ. When the record comes up and you give your account and the Lord looks at you with those eyes, man, and it, you give your account. And he said, yeah, you quit though, didn't you? You quit on me, didn't you? You got wore out, huh? Gave you all the tools at your disposal not to be worn out. Why'd you let it happen? I think about that stuff, man. Freaks me right out. All right, Malachi 1. Go ahead, get a sippy first. I'm getting, I got you, man. Sippy, pop a pink pill, we're good to go. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it, man. I got to tell you, Robitussin Max Strength is phenomenal. I mean, even if you don't have a cough, it's phenomenal. <laughs> We only got Hobby Lobby Chick-fil-A. You need something else. Oh, and NyQuil. I need something else besides Chick-fil-A and Hobby Lobby, man. I need some drugs, man. Some legal ones. Take a little one for the summer's off. I, 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 that's bibl it's biblical, man. <laughs> but uh, Shut up, Kenny. <laughs> Max strength. It's right, if you're over the house, I'll take you right to it. Get you hooked, man. It's good stuff, man. It's good stuff, man. Not that... Well, see, look at that. I, I told you it'd work, man. I don't have any on me, but if I was a dealer, I'd, I'd have some. All right, Malachi <laughs> 1, 12, 13, 14. Please, Estia. <laughs> Amen. You're weary 
at the table of the Lord. What's on the table of the Lord for the New Testament believer? The unleavened bread and the unfermented wine, which pictures what? My body and my blood. And you're weary of that? You say it's contemptible? If you go back early in the chapter, he says, you've offered on my altar polluted bread. In other words, this thing, your bread, has gotten weary to you. I'm glad Brother Bird said that this morning about First Chronicles. It takes some time to appreciate every word of God is pure. We quote it, but until it really becomes, I know it's pure, but until it becomes pure to you practically and sweet to you practically, you'll get weary of reading it. I'll, that's why when somebody says you should read your Bible consistently, because it'll, it'll, it'll help purify your heart, your mind, your thoughts, and all those things, and helping your walk with the Lord, help you be a good witness, and and all of a sudden, you, you know what you think when a preacher says that more than once? Why has he got to say that again? You get weary with what's on the Lord's table. You get weary with what's on the Lord's altar. You get, you get, you get weary from that. That's a bad, folks, let me just say, that's a bad weariness to have when you're tired of the things of God. It's a bad weariness to have, man. Uh, I would say this. I don't know many people that have come back from that. I've known a few. But overall, overall, most saved people that we know are no longer serving the Lord in any capacity. Oh, they might hear a little, a little something here, a little God smack here, just a little something. But the reality is, do you know of anybody that has said, you know what? I'm just weary. I'm done with it. Bible's really not exciting to me anymore. It's the same old message. I hear, you know, that praying stuff doesn't work. How many of those people you've heard say that or act like that or, or have that, uh, that feeling or that attitude about their Savior and about Christianity, how many of them do you know that have come back? Realistically speaking. Another, oh, I just come back anytime I want. I mean, the prodigal son, I mean, you preach on this morning, you talk about it all the time. Yeah, not everybody comes back up out of the pit. Not everybody gets out of the hog waller and says, you know what, I've gotten weary and well-doing. Look where I'm in the pit. You know, I'm going to get up and go to my father's house. Because you know what that takes, first of all? A humility. That I'm wrong, I'm here because of my doing, and what am I doing here when my servants, the servants of my father's house have better food and better place to live than, and eat and, than, than what I got here? It's going to take humility. But who's going to do that, man? I'm saying you've got to be really careful because when you get weary and well-doing, you get weary, you get worn down, then you get out. There's no guarantee you're coming back. And it's not funny, man. It hurts. But that's reality. So that's, that's why it's a good warning in Galatians, Paul and Epistle. Be not weary in well-doing. And don't get involved in evil doing or the bad part of being weary in that whole thing. Go with me over to Deuteronomy. Give me, uh, oh, man. All right. Go to Deuteronomy 8. Mac, you with me? Give you a little preventive medicine. Deuteronomy 8. I'll give you the verses in a, in a, in a minute. T typically when you get weary, what are some things that happen to you? I mean, take, a, take the part about being sick out of the equation. Typically when you're weary, you're what? Not a lot of sleep, but you're typically what as well? You're what? I'm sorry? Well, that, that's a symptom of it. Thank you. That's one of the fruit of the Spirit for me, both of them together, man. But usually what happens is you're typically dehydrated. That'll wear you out. You're, you're, oh, pff, man. I mean, honestly, that's why fasting is not talked or preached about or really practiced too much. You find out how much your flesh, my flesh, runs me. When you go home and Paul's, you're eating your belly over there like you're, going, you're, like you're a little hungry right now, man. But you think about... Yes. You had a donut? Yeah. You didn't bring any in here? <laughs> you want me to bring them? I got them. I want to be missing. Why do we even engage the, yeah. the crowd? Why do I even do it, man? Why do I even do it? It's a glutton for punishment. But typically there's some factors involved in that weariness too, man. And it's good to have some preventative medicine on the front side to try and Fight that opportunity of weariness when it, to come your way. Look what the Bible says to me over in Deuteronomy. Mac, get Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 4, please. Know what was in my heart, no 
Amen. We read that in Nehemiah 9 this morning. God's cure for weariness when you're going through the wilderness is what? That book. That Bible, man. It has everything you need. I mean, very, very quickly, because we only got one more verse. Give me some things the Word of God is from a food perspective. Okay, one more time. Oh, we got tongues going on here. Brother Jonathan, thank you for being obedient. Honey's a great. That's don't don't call me. That's she's right next to you, man. <laughs> I have Haley, then Jen, then over here Bread. to Justin. I'm sorry. Bread, Bread honey. No. Nope. That's a great one, man. If Polly had more milk, you'd. <laughs> you know what I'm talking. About. Go ahead. Me. me, Kenny. Good job. Yep, brother Bert. Strong me. My point is, my, my, my point is in these verses is that I we we do we're guilty of it. We quote the verses, but the reality is, I get I can get along in my flesh without the Bible for a little while, but the inner man will start starving and getting so weary. That book is seriously your life if you're saved. It is your life. It's the sustaining nutrients you need for a successful Christian life, according to Joshua 1.8. You cannot stay away from this book if you're saved and expect to be in any shape to wage the warfare you and I have been called to wage. It won't happen. Go with me over to Ecclesiastes. Mo. Ecclesiastes, please. That's in the Old Testament, in case you're wondering. Just hooking you up, man. Haven't seen you in a while. Just wondering, man, if you're, you're still, still saved or fall out of the body or, as Brother Bird said, in the body or out of the body. Bird, I got to say, that's one of the best things. That's one of the funniest things I think you've ever said, man. <laughs> and we, I think we got, we got it on, we got it loaded up to the, we got it uh, into the old interweb. So you could be the funniest guy in the interweb, man. <laughs> Here's, here's another good one. If you could, uh... Mo, can you get 8 through 12, please, of Ecclesiastes 12? Am I talking about 8 through 12? That's Ecclesiastes 12, yes, 8 through 12. You got it. That's so cool. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, that which was written was upright, even worth its fruit. The words of the wise are as goads, mm -hmm. and as nails fastened by the master of assembly, which are given from one shepherd. That's so cool. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end, and much study is weariness of flesh. That's a good weariness. Kenny, did I have you read tonight? Did I skip you? It's okay. No, I, I did I feel bad now. I know you have another one. Wow, no, man, this is bad. I did, I skipped. <laughs> wow, this is tore this to No, Lenny, Benny, that's it. Benny, Benny Drill, Benny, De yeah, man. That's, I honestly, I'm coming in cooked next time. I'm serious, man. I'm just doing it. I'm getting, I'm getting blottoed, man, getting up here. But anyway, that is, that's a good weariness right there. Now, all kidding aside, if, if I had you raise your hands, how many of you would study your Bible if it wasn't for Sunday school or something you knew you had to teach? How many of you studied something in the Word of God in the last 30 days? Don't raise your hand. Just think about it for a minute. A word, a phrase, something you came across where, wow, I've seen that before. Let me go run the verses on that. Like the mouth of the Lord, we just saw. Runs the verse on the mouth of the Lord every time he speaks. We just talked about there are many voices in the world, none of them about signification. Let me find out what comes out of the mouth of the Lord, which would be the voice of the Lord. Let me run some verses on that. And you'd be like, well, there's like 80 of them. Okay, so it takes you an hour. But you know what your flesh just said? You don't have the time to do that. 
But if you wearied your flesh, you wouldn't give in to your flesh the next time he came around knocking, because he will come around knocking again. And you just keep putting that old man down. And one of the great ways is the sustenance to keep you from getting weary. But study that book, man. Study that book. You are all supposed to study this Bible, not just me. Not just saying you're Sunday school teachers. You're supposed to study that Bible. You are. You're accountable to do that. Pretty cool. All right. I am, honestly, I was going to shut down right there. And honestly, I am going to, but this is troubling me, Kenny. And I'm going to have to do this now. You know what? No, Brother Paul, you pray for us. We're out. Amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen.